tell us about coronary perfusion pressure, Professor? Can't we discuss it later? I have to go to work. Don't worry, I'll fill you in. Alright. See you guys later. Later. See ya. Okay. Coronary perfusion pressure is the driving pressure to coronary flow to the subendocardium. What makes the heart different to other tissues? Well first, almost all coronary blood flow takes place in diastole, particularly for the left coronary artery. In the heart the LV cavity and central aortic pressures are equal in systole. This doesn't happen in other tissue beds, where there is a gradient to flow throughout. What do you mean by gradient? the difference between upstream and downstream pressures. This is the driving force to flow. What is the upstream pressure? The central aortic pressure. Since most flow takes place in diastole, this is the aortic diastolic pressure. And the downstream? It's the left ventricular cavity pressure. Explain. You see, the heart is a hollow organ. The tissue pressure in the subendocardium reflects the cavity pressure. Normally this is close to a zero for most of diastole, except toward the end, after atrial contraction. So what happens if the LV cavity pressure is high in diastole? The heart is like a sponge. It won't pick up more liquid if it's already full. You have to squeeze it out. If LV filling pressure is high, blood flow down the coronary arteries is reduced. By how much? It can be quite a lot. If aortic diastolic pressure is low, say around 60 mmHg, and LV diastolic pressure is 20 to 30, then perfusion pressure may be reduced by more than half. You do the numbers. So what do we do about that? Well, watch out for low aortic diastolic pressure and reduced filling pressure. This usually means reducing venous return by shrinking blood volume through diuretics. So it's possible to improve coronary blood flow by using venodilators and diuretics? Yes, when the underlying problem is left heart failure. Aha. Uh -huh. Now I get it.